Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, Uniquely Ursula. I'm Ursula and today I'm out here in this little corner of my pool area. It's a beautiful sunny spring day and I'm getting ready to do the cleanup that's needed with all the leaves and debris that have fallen over the winter. But four years ago I made a video and it was about creating these large, irregular, concrete stepping stones for this fire pit area. I have received so many kind and lovely comments from people out there, but I've also received questions and there definitely are three that I get the most. The first one is, how are they holding up? And I feel like this is the perfect time to check them out. so the rocks are all cleared off and I've looked them all over pretty closely I see no cracking I see no chipping I feel like the color variations and texture I did just look even better every year I love these so much um, yeah they're still holding up four years later. Another common question that I get asked all the time is, did I use any sort of reinforcement in the concrete, such as chicken wire or metal bars? Um, the answer to that is no, I didn't. I used a crack resistant concrete. Okay, so this is the concrete mix that I've chosen to use. It's the crack resistant because it's fiber reinforced. Um, this brand just happens to be at the local Menards. It's closer to our home than Lowe's, which carries Quickrete. Um, Quickrete is basically the same price as this and <clears throat> also fiber reinforced. Um, the key to that that I've read, or it's on the back, it says um, that, so that there's no need for any kind of um, like a wire mesh or um, chicken wire stabilizer type thing inside <clears throat> keeps it nice and strong and it came and you could see the fibers in the concrete that were meant to keep it from cracking and, and that's all I did um, however that brings me to the third most asked question which is what is water curing um, it's something that I kind of touched on very briefly in the video, um, but I really feel that that was the secret and the key to making these extremely strong. Um, I am not a concrete expert by any means, but somewhere along the way, as I kind of looked into what I was gonna do, somewhere I heard about water curing and it just made sense to me. And so that is what I chose to do. My understanding of water curing is this. You want to slow down the evaporation process of the water from the concrete. And the longer you can keep that concrete wet, the stronger and harder that concrete will get. Hopefully I'm saying that right, but um, again, I don't remember where I heard it and I don't remember why I chose five days but I did water cure these for five days um, and so what that looked like is I actually covered them over with a big sheet of plastic and maybe twice a day would come out and with the hose um, water them down and then recover them so that the, the heat of the sun wouldn't cause the water to evaporate it's funny because back then when I was doing this project, I would call them my rock babies. I felt like I was hatching rock babies. So, and I didn't say that in the video, but I was calling this my rock baby project. <laughs> and um, yeah, it felt like I was hatching rocks with my little covering and watering them down and such, waiting for them to emerge as perfect little stepping stones. <laughs> Yeah, so that was the process that I used. No reinforcement. I water cured for five days. And here we are four years later and they're 
in my opinion, still just in an excellent condition. Super happy with them overall. Okay, so those are the answers to some of the more frequently asked questions from that video. If you haven't seen the video, I'll link it above and below. Check it out. Maybe you want to create your own little rock babies. <laughs> Thanks again for watching my channel, you guys, and I will see you next time. Happy spring! One of the critiques of my original video is that I didn't really do a lot of talking and explaining. I forced a lot of reading of the details. So I've gone back to some of the original footage and pulled out places where I was talking and explaining more and I've decided to add some of that footage into this video. I think if you've made it this far and you've watched this much, the chances are good you might actually want to try this project and these bits of information could be helpful to you. So enjoy some of the original footage from four years ago. Hello and welcome to my backyard project. I'm really excited to share what I've been doing. This was an area that needed some attention this year and to be honest we did not have this in the budget and so I've been looking for a really budget-friendly way to create these giant flagstones um, right in place. I guess the hardest challenge for me was finding what I could use for the mold for these stones and what you're looking at here are two more molds that I've put in place where I'm going to put a couple more stones. But essentially what I'm using for my mold, believe it or not, that these are vertical blinds that you would hang in a doorway. What I liked about them is they're a nice smooth edge. They're bendable, they're moldable. I can push them and use them how I want. Um, I have them secured with um, these little yard stakes. You can see I just mold it how I want and stick those in, it holds it in place. Okay, just to show you how easy using these vinyl blinds are, I have this area here. Um, I have my larger stone set up, but I want to put a smaller stone here, and the distance that I had taped this is just a little too big, so I need to adjust it, and it's just as simple as this. I'm putting it a little closer together, and wrapping it with the painter's tape, just to hold it in place for now. And then I put it in my space and decide if I like the size. So I'm working on this little, littler rock and I have put my concrete in. You can see about how it is consistency wise. Now, this is pretty moldable. Sometimes I mix it where it's um, a little thinner and that's okay. It just takes a little longer to set up. Um, and I will try to get some more video. I'm gonna put gloves on and push this around and I'll show you. I have not added any colorant yet to this. As I mix it and spread it, I think I'm gonna sprinkle some on and kind of paint it around with my paintbrush that I showed you earlier and some water. So it's just kind of fun to play with and I mix and mold and push. Um, that's the process. Okay, so I pushed and molded that very first layer down and I really, you know, pushed it against the edges and kind of patted it real hard with my hands. You can see it's water starting to kind of rise up out of it. I've added another layer here that will be much more close to the top layer. I don't think I'll need to add any more. I might. So I went ahead and I dumped in some of that black charcoal colorant. Um, and as I kind of trowel it around and work it through, it just kind of marbles it and, and makes it look pretty. So I will work on that and then show you the results there and then what I do from that point. My small rock has been fully filled in. The colorant is marbled in. I've started the process of making the top have the texture. It's not quite ready to have the mold pulled off yet. Sorry for that. Um, but I'll show you. I just kind of work this across the top and push in in places and just really give it texture. I can, I can take these sides and really push them in. See how that comes away and gives, you know, even a little extra texture and dimension to the rock. I can still do a lot here to really mold it and bend it and shape it into, you know, something that looks just a little bit more natural and and um, less manufactured, hopefully, is the goal. Um, I can take these out now. I want to show you what I look for to know that it's ready. This, this side got a little wet, more wet than I normally would have. It's because I watered this stone next to it. 
Um, so what I do <clears throat> to try and tell if it's ready to pull away, it really kind of pulls away naturally on its own. See how that's dry there? And I've pushed it and it just pulls right away. You can see it holding its shape. So, but if I have any spots like this that don't seem like they want to hold their shape, boy, it's still a little wet. So I'm gonna still give it a little more time. Almost the entire rock is ready to have this form pulled away. Um, but for some reason that little spot got really wet, but you can see as I get here, it's super easy to pull this away. Okay, so this rock, I just took the mold off. It pretty much pulled away. I had a few areas that got a little wetter than what I normally get. Now I can kind of mold and form these edges a little bit if I, if I feel like they're too um, um, like angled. I can, that's what this brush really does well because you, you don't need to add much water. Just keep, keep it damp and and work those like this area is still very very wet so I'm doing very little here and I'm I don't mind it because it's going to give it a little bit of variation right next to the other one you know I just kind of paint along these edges to make sure you know, I'm getting a nice smooth edge you know and if I see weird color things then I can always add a little color in general I don't mind how this one's looking um, definitely got we had a little color mishap over here and we had to run the hose so this got really wet over here I just can't believe how easy this has been um, so you know I see some you know, rougher edges here just kind of smoothing them down you don't want them cracking later and then if I'm brushing along and I don't like how the brush top on the top looks bring back my handy little plastic bag, get that texture back in there, and I have to be careful not to step in rocks that I've already laid. These rocks I probably could stand on, but they're just a couple days old and I'd rather just not risk it. I'm sure I could stand on them, but I don't want to put any weight on them while they're still curing. Anyway, I think you kind of get the point here. I mean, I go around the whole rock. You can add color here. You can play and paint. Oh, yes, I just love that stone. I love it. Okay, that's, that is the artistry of the stone. And I'm really happy with this, so we'll see how it turns out. Okay, all right, so there is no science here. I'm just guessing. And I had already added part of another one, so that's all I'm doing here on this one. You can also see the consistency that I use, approximately. This really is like the perfect consistency in my opinion because it's moldable but it's still very wet. But not super wet. to this back stone and then when I'm done adding it I'm gonna play around so I'll get some more video of that after. On that final day I did recruit some helpers because Let's face it, my back was killing me. I needed some help shoveling and mixing and my boys stepped in. But I did manage to put in the final touches. Here was the finished project four years ago and again, how the stones are looking today. I'm hopeful that seeing some of this original footage is helpful to someone out there and that my frequently asked questions have been answered. And if you've tried this project, I would love to hear from you. Thank you so much for checking out this video and like and subscribe to my channel. Bye everyone.